Hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Anyway, as you can see, uh, I've gotten rid of the old LX90 uh, that I talked about in the last video. Demounted the uh, optical tube assembly and mounted it on this uh, Ioptron AZ uh, Mount Pro. Okay, that I just got for about twelve, about thirteen hundred, is what these run. Before I show you how it works, I kind of want to go through <clears throat> some of the things I don't like about it. And uh, one of them is the tripod itself. It's got uh, some little legs down on the bottom. I'll show you those at at the end of the video. And it's got a little uh, lock on the leg to lock the tripod sections. Well, discovered that those locks really don't hold those legs uh, extensions very uh, securely. If you push on the mount at all, uh, especially one of these legs, this back one, it will compress back into uh, the mount, you know, and it won't be level again. So, <clears throat> you know, rather than sending back the tripod, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy some uh, stainless steel uh, hose clamps. And once I get it uh, in a level position, I'll uh, lock in those hose clamps on the tripod so that the leg can't go back in. Uh, regardless of how much pressure you put on it. That'll be my solution there. So the locks on the legs are not sufficient in my opinion to hold it, hold the legs out. Now I'll try putting more pressure on it. This was simply using my hands, you know, and getting it as tight as I could. I'll try a little uh, whack with a hammer, see what that does. but. I'm not satisfied with the tripod itself. The other thing I'm not too uh, happy about is they have these three uh, leveling uh, little locks on the tripod. So you got to make sure that the legs are very tight with the uh, braces on the bottom. And then you got to make sure that all three of these are real tight once you get it leveled, or else the mount itself will rock. It's very, um, the go-to's won't be very good if the tri uh, whole setup is not perfectly level. So you got to level it to start with. And when there's any kind of uh, looseness in these uh, three leveling uh, uh, little knobs that they've got in here, any kind of looseness, and they're not all completely tight, uh, then you get an up or down motion that knocks it out of level, which means your go-tos are not going to be very good. To help with that, I know it's got a little bubble level on it. A lot of people say that that level is not really level until you actually take it out and make sure it's uh, fitted and glued in properly. I'm not going to do that. I just went out and bought a two-way little bubble level and I can lay it right on the top up here, up above here, and get a two-way position without fooling with the little uh, centering bubble that's built into the tripod which I consider to be kind of worthless. Just go out and get yourself a $3 little bubble level and you'll be in business. All right, with those said, uh, <clears throat> it's really a neat mount. Let me turn it on and sh while it's running, I'll tell you what it's doing. So it's got its own battery pack, so you don't have to carry anything else out in the field. It's already got a lithium battery pack built into the bottom of it with a charging port right here. 
and a RS-232 port right here. And of course your hand box uh, controller goes into this port. <clears throat> anyway, uh, it does come with the RS-232 cable. That's part of it. But what it doesn't come with are these little knobs that you see here where you can lock down uh, the deal. These are extra cost options. They're about 20 something dollars for these four little deals. I think that's being overly uh, selective. They should just give you these with the mount when you buy it. You shouldn't have to go back and order them uh, to be able to have a, a tight, tightly uh, altitude uh, lock. And these little knobs allow you to do that, lock it down real tight. Without them, it's a little bit more difficult. Also, it comes with uh, one 10 pound weight, so uh, you know, you can. You don't have to buy anything to get this one 10 pound weight, but if you do want to mount a second telescope on this side, you have to go out and buy another saddle uh, to mount it with. They don't give you that. So actually, if they just turned it from a $12.99 mount into a $13.59 mount, and just quit fooling around. They could give you all this stuff uh, in the original package when you bought it. And uh, I don't think $50 is going to make or break uh, somebody that decides to buy it. Uh, another $50 is not going to make or break it. And that way you'd have all the pieces to start with. You wouldn't have to go back to them and buy other uh, useful uh, options. And that's the way they've got it structured right now. I don't agree with that. I think they ought to uh, just give you these knobs and uh, the saddle to mount a second telescope right when you buy it so you got all the pieces you need. And trying to hit that $12.99 uh, price point is kind of silly. Anyway, let's uh, turn it on and I'll talk about how it works. It is kind of neat. Once you get it perfectly level, and that should be your first step, is to make sure the mount is level. Uh, then you just simply turn it on. <coughs> your little hand controller will light up. Now I know you can't read this. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, it gave me a little message, but if you just pause, it will go ahead and go on through the alignment procedure. It's got built-in GPS, so uh, you know it's going to find its location, the time, the date, the site, of course, from the location, and it will align itself automatically if you just let it uh, go through its little dance. So here it is, it's uh, doing that right now. It's actually looking for south, which it'll find in a minute. And uh, <clears throat> then it's going to come up and give me an object to center all by itself without you doing anything. But again, the critical part of it is you have to have it level. Uh, if it's not level and it's tilted, your go-to's are not going to be uh, very good. So here it goes, it's come around and it's found south and normally I wouldn't have to even push the button but since it can't get a good GPS lock because I'm inside the house and my house has that aluminum thermal barrier in it that keeps the satellite signal out. I've got to hit enter one time to tell it uh, yes or no on daylight savings time. So I just did that. Now it's going to the first object all by itself which is Mercury. And 
it's headed toward Mercury there. Now if you don't want that, you can hit the back button when it's selected that. Hit the back button. Now it's going to go to the second alignment object, which is Vega. Of course, it picks the brightest objects automatically. And if you don't like that one, you hit the back button again, and it's going to go to Capella, another bright star. So anyway, you have probably eight or ten of these to choose from. But once you uh, decide on which one you want, it prompts you. It says use the left and right arrow keys uh, to center the object. So I'm going to turn it up. You can use these number keys for speed, speed of slewing. So I'm going to put it on nine, which you would never do if you were trying to align but just to get it to work fast, see. Okay, so I did that, and I hit enter, and then it says, gives me a second go at it to get it perfectly centered, and I just did that, and I hit enter, and uh, it's aligned now. Now what you do after it's aligned, and you can align on one object, you can also align, do an alignment on two objects uh, if you want. They say it's not necessary. I've had pretty good luck with one object. There is also a sync function. So let's say it gets off a little bit. You can point it to some known object, center that object, and hit sync, and it will synchronize on that object. And then your go-to's in that part of the sky will be pretty good again. So anyway, uh, from this position, you know, we just did an alignment on uh, Capella. So we'll hit the menu, and uh, it's got several lines, and I'll read them to you. Sync to target, alignment, settings, edit user objects, uh, firmware information and zero position. And uh, zero position is uh, pointed straight up and down, the tube pointed straight up and down and uh, aligned on the south. So that's the zero position. So anyway, and it also has, uh, let me kind of go down a little bit uh, to settings. And under there, there's uh, Beep settings, you can turn it on or off. Display settings, you can uh, change the contrast and the brightness of the screen. You can set the tracking rate, which is not necessary normally. You can set the altitude limits. You know, you can eliminate, let's say, the first 15 degrees uh, from the horizon up to 15 or from the horizon up to 20 just to get yourself above maybe some trees in the distance so it doesn't pick objects that are right on the horizon. It will not pick them if it's below the horizon, but it can pick them when it's like five degrees above the horizon, where you may not be able to see it for uh, buildings or trees or things on the ground. So you can set an altitude limit. Uh, you can also heat up the hand controller for outside, you know. Some of these displays, when it gets real cold outside, they fade out. This one has a built-in heater in it. And also, it's got Wi-Fi uh, built in. So not only does it have GPS, it's also got Wi-Fi. So you can check your Wi-Fi settings and um, turn it on or off. And uh, that way you can connect a laptop to this uh, mount and control it remotely uh, over a Wi-Fi connection without any cables whatsoever. Or you can use the cable that they give you and connect the laptop directly up wired. So it's got a lot of neat features built in. But <clears throat> one of them that it's got is uh, 
Let me back up a minute. And we'll go to uh, Capella. And then we'll go to Menu. And we'll go to uh, through a list of uh, objects. And it's got the Messier objects. It's got the NGC object catalog. It's got the IC object catalog. It's got a user database, you know, where you can put your own objects in there. The other thing it will do, it will go to the sun. So you need to be careful that you never select the sun uh, as an object uh, without a proper solar filter. But it will go directly to the sun. So a lot of telescopes don't do that for safety reasons. I guess they figure, uh, you know, if you're spending $1,300 just for the mount and uh, extra for the tube, uh, you must have enough sense not to know to point it to the sun without a solar filter. But so I just tell you that for maybe some newbies out there that don't know that. And of course the filter that you're going to get is going to be mounted on the front of this tube. It's not going to be mounted on the eyepiece like it used to be when I was a kid. They gave us this uh, Looked like a welder's uh, dark, dark, dark glass that would be mounted onto the eyepiece. And of course, the entire focus was coming to focus at the eyepiece and got very hot, of course, and a lot of times that glass cracked. Uh, and hopefully it didn't do that while your eye was next to it. So <laughs> anyway, they stopped doing that. Uh, back when I was a kid, a teenager, and now the solar filters are all mounted on the front, so the scope itself uh, never gets hot. All right, it it simply blocks the light right out here before it enters the telescope. So just remember that it does go to the sun, and um, it's got uh, hundred thousand objects in this hand controller, if I'm not mistaken. Now, a lot of those you're not going to be able to see. Uh, they're too dim uh, for the size telescopes that you're going to have on here, or for the viewing conditions wherever you happen to be. Uh, but it does have an extensive library of objects already built in. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's pretty good. That it does that, kind of put that up, and uh, so I've taken it out a couple of times now. Uh, first time I took it out, I had that problem with it, you know, not being tightened down, and it was moving slightly when it spun. So be sure you double check these. I personally, I would rather them have not put these on here and made these legs where you could e easily adjust the length of the uh, legs to themselves to basically level the scope. That's the way we normally do it with these scopes is we level it using the tripod legs. Well, they came up with this idea of doing this having these three uh, leveling blocks. But like I said, you can't leave one of them loose uh, at all. Because if you do, if it's not tightened all the way up, then when it spins around, it's going to reach that, the weight's going to reach that thing and it's going to tilt out of level. So you got to be careful that all three of these plus the tripod legs are all locked in, and then start doing your uh, leveling with these three leveling blocks. Anyway, with that said, that's what I've got now. And uh, one one evening when I take it out, I'll pull out the camera and we'll kind of do a uh, nighttime outside 
when the weather gets a little better. It's a little cold out there right now. Anyway, like I usually do, I wish you 73 and clear skies. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later. Be good and subscribe.